Live from Dodd Memorial Stadium in Norwich, Connecticut, it's day two of the NEC Baseball Championships here in 2015. Coming up, the Sacred Heart Pioneers take on the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights. Game. Runners at the corners, and this one's hit hard down the left. Just inside the line. Doyle's going to go into third, not in time. A two-run triple for Jason Sullivan. Sacred Heart takes a 3-0 lead. Well, things certainly changed in the blink of an eye. Jason Sullivan, a dangerous hitter, hitting 301 at the top of the lineup, 21 RBIs prior to this swing. Not that much margin right there to work with, just dropping it fair on the line and then got helped out as Brennan had some difficulty playing it off that wall. That wall in left field is played on an angle, so when the ball bounced out, it caromed in a different direction. He had to go backwards to play it, and that little extra bounce off the wall allowed Sullivan to get all the way to third. Lee, but Mazzoni, yes. Hard hit ball up the middle, and that is a base hit, and an RBI base hit at that for Jesus Medina. Four to nothing, Sacred Heart, here in the second inning as Sullivan scores. Here's the 3 1. This is swung on and lifted in a deep left field. Back at the track, at the wall. This one's caught. Or no, it goes over the wall, home run. I think initially the umpire thought maybe it ended up in the glove, reached up, it called for the out, but it just sails over the first wall, and it's a two-run shot to left, and it's now a 6-0 Pioneer lead. The 1-0 pitch. Hit well enough into right, pretty deep. Siebler makes the catch. Byram tags, he scores, throw to third, not in time. Seven to nothing, Sacred Heart. And here's the kick and the pitch. See you later. Five strikeouts. Jason Foley, fantastic. Foley has been an artist. Here's the 2-0. -oh. A little check swing that takes a skip off the mound and takes a skip off the glove of the second baseman in a right field. So with all that, another run comes across, and it's now 8-0 Sacred Heart. Pennsylvania. Northern Lehigh High School. Hard hit ball. Deep left center field. Moonen going back, looking up, and that ball is gone. A two-run homer to left for Sacred Heart's Zach Short. They continue to pile it on. It is his second two-run homer of the game. Sacred Heart leads it 10 to nothing. Pitch is bounced out to Short. Zach Short has it. Throws on to first, and he gets him for the third out of the inning and the final out of the ball game. An absolute masterpiece for Foley, the artist. 10 to nothing. Sacred Heart wins it. A complete game two-hit shutout for the previously unheralded Jason Foley. Mr. Foley, let me start with you here. You got off to a little bit of a start, a pretty perfect start there through the first couple innings. Did you have a sense of, of really how things were going, or were you so locked in the zone you didn't really notice it? Uh, I was pretty locked in from the beginning. Uh, it just uh, I didn't really know what was happening. I just wanted to get out there and get outs and keep, keep our team in the game. And you got some great defensive play behind you, defensive play like this guy right yeah. here made for you. So what was it like, not just that you were throwing well, but you had the support from behind you? Uh, it just makes it a, a ton easier, man. When you got uh, the offense producing for you and you got no errors behind you, uh, every play is being made. It makes it a lot easier for you out there as a pitcher. What was it like sitting in the dugout watching the offense start to put more runs across the plate? Oh, it was a great feeling. You know, I mean, not just for myself, but as a team. You know, uh, we're building some, we're rolling, seem to be uh, on the right track to victory. So that's, uh, that's good. Hopefully we keep it up get a nice win tomorrow. After seeing what Cooksey did yesterday, you know, coming in here, was this your mentality to give your team not just, you know, innings, but also, you know, keep zeros on the board? Well, both. I wanted to uh, give our team a chance to win as much as we can and save pitching, but now it's great. We got uh, almost a full staff going into tomorrow, so let's see what we can do. Hopefully take it in one, but if not, we got the pitching for two. We tried not to jinx it. We didn't talk about anything on the broadcast, but, um, you know, you had a great game anyway. Two hits, no runs allowed, so congratulations on the Appreciate great performance. Thank you. Thank you. Let's bring in Mr. Short here. Um, I, I want to say, you know, two home runs in this game, two two-run home runs, and we talked about the offense producing. You were a, a big part of it, so, you know, were you feeling 
feeling it right when you woke up from this morning, or you know, did you have a sense of you know how hot you're going to be today? Oh uh, man, uh, not really. But uh, G always drills into our head, just stay in the moment. Uh, I mean, especially going behind this guy, you just get some confidence the whole game and just go from there. And the team, you know, you were out here, you know, bench pressing before the game, you know, 10 minutes before the first pitch. Um, so it seems like you guys were really loose, and that's been, I guess, the trademark of this team. Oh, yeah. G, again, he always said, just stay loose, live in the moment. Uh, Keith always does a great job, and that's usually Sundays that he does the bench, bench press and uh, squatting, but in the tournament, I do it every day. And you get another day now going into the championship round tomorrow. So, you know, from the, the team perspective, how do you, you know, save some of this offense for whoever you see tomorrow? I mean, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. We'll stay with the approach uh, in one inning at a time and uh, hopefully come out on top tomorrow, if not Sunday. Guys, congratulations on this one. Appreciate it. Let's talk to Coach G. And Coach, two complete game victories to start off the NEC tournament. This formula sounds a little familiar. Yeah, absolutely. From uh, 2011 and 12, uh, we had three in a row. So um, we'll, try, we'll try for that. But, you know, we have the staff to to go the distance this year. so uh, And both of the guys, Cooksey and Foley, threw their best games. You know, and, and they've both had tremendous careers so far, and they both threw their best games in the, in the championship, I mean, in the uh, NEC tournament. So that says a lot about their preparation, says a lot about their work ethic, and I'm just really proud of both of those guys. And what does it say about the program now? Seven straight years in the championship round. I mean, you never see runs like that. What is it about Sacred Heart Baseball that has allowed you to keep this uh, sustained run of success? It's the guys we bring in. We bring in some guys with great work ethics, and uh, they just continue to develop and develop and develop. Uh, they buy into to the program, which is just about just keep getting better and better and better and working to improve. I think, uh, you know, we didn't have a tremendous season, wins and losses, but we had a tremendous year as far as growth went, and it's paying off right now, as we all can see. And looking ahead, you'll either see the Knights again or you'll see the Bryant Bulldogs again, the team that you saw in the finals the last couple of years. So, you know, whoever survives that game tomorrow, you know, what do you expect to see in the championship round? Oh, a dogfight. It's, it's going to be a tremendous battle tomorrow. And uh, we just got to get ready and take care of Sacred Heart and take care of our individual approaches. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, we'll see. We'll see you at 4 o'clock tomorrow in the championship. Congratulations. Right. Thank you very much. The Pioneers are headed back to the finals. We'll see them back here tomorrow, 4 o'clock, against either the Knights um, or the Bulldogs here on NEC Front Row.